Ever wondered about the oldest languages spoken by humanity? Forget what you thought you knew about ancient tongues. This is the untold story of the click languages. Stick to the end. If you'd like to learn more about the history of this linguistic reality, how their speakers diverged from other humans a long time ago, and why they are widely considered as the oldest. Many people believe that languages like Sumerian, Tamil and Sanskrit are some of the oldest known languages because they are evidenced in writing, but they are Zakaj. Writing is a pretty young invention which goes back to around 5,000 years ago. So it means, by the time these languages started to be written down, they were more or less equally as old as all other unwritten languages that were being spoken in other parts of the world. Which then begs the question, what is the oldest language in the world? To answer that, we need to understand something. How is a language born? Any group of people living together might want to communicate ideas such that everyone understands them. It makes sense that vocalizations that were easily produced by everyone and natural utterances that describe emotion would help a group in understanding each other. This possibly evolved into the most sophisticated communicating sounds that we have today. So, the oldest language was most likely a very simple form of communication, possibly a combination of vocalizations and body gestures. So, is there any language today that has any of these features? Studies done in 2003 showed that speakers of Hadza and Jutuan have the most divergent mitochondrial DNA. Thus, it was inferred that the primary genetic divisions of humanity are the Jutuan, the Hadza, and then everybody else. The studies implies that the Jutuan and the Hadza split a long time ago from other humans. Since two of these three groups spoke click languages, it led to the inference that the original human language was possibly a click language. Every click language is African, except one notable exception. A recent study showed that two indigenous Australian ethnic groups, known as the Ladil and the Yankal people, were the only non-African speakers known to use clicks in verbal communication. They, however, utilized this feature in a ceremonial code language called Damin. Now that the ceremonies have been declining recently, the language has now become extinct. Moving now to Africa, a lot of languages in the southern part of the continent and only three in the east use cliques. Two of the East African ones, the Hadza and Sandawe, are already classified as part of the clique languages, and the remaining one is the Dahalo language of Kenya. Now, this is a unique case because the Dahalo are classified under the Cushitic group which belong to the Afro-Asiatic language family. So, how does an Afro-Asiatic language have cliques? Well, it has been evidenced that the Khoisan people are some of the original inhabitants of East Africa and it is suspected that the Dahalo may have once spoken a Sandawe or Hadza-like language and that they retain cliques in just a handful of words when they were assimilated to Kushitic because many of the words with cliques are basic vocabulary. Another unique case happens in Southern Africa. The Bantu language group did not have cliques. So how do languages like Yeyi, Kosa and Zulu have cliques? Well, this has been owed to the close proximity and the verifiable contact with Khoisan languages. Therefore, these Bantu languages must have borrowed click sounds from the Khoisan languages. One count found that 10% of basic vocabularies in both Isikosa and Yei contained a click. Now, the Khoisan language group is the only remaining language group with unborrowed clicks. This, coupled with the research that determined these people to be the oldest people in the world, 
and the fact that Southern and Eastern Africa have both been proposed as a birthplace of humanity puts their languages as prime candidates for the oldest languages in the world and may be the closest surviving ones to the ancient tongues spoken by early humans. The Khoisan are presently found on the Kalahari Desert, mainly in Namibia, Botswana and South Africa, and to central Tanzania. Like I mentioned earlier, these people are the most genetically diverse population globally. People who live within a few miles of each other are less closely related than Europeans and Asians are. This diversity extends to their languages as well. Although these languages are collectively called Khoisan, they are not very similar to each other, which has rendered the blanket term defunct. It has been found that the languages come from three large distinct language families, the Khoi, Ka and Tu, and two smaller ones, the Sandawe and Hadza of Tanzania. These languages are so old and have diverged so much to a point that there is no way left to trace a common root. The Khoi family include languages like Khoi Khoi, Shua, Tsoa, Naro, and Kana. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce these well, but I'm going to try. While the Ka group include Amkoi and Kung, and the two group include languages like Kon. Most of these languages are endangered, and several such as Kwe, Kam, and have gone extinct. The Kuikui language is the most spoken among these, with around 250,000 people, followed by the Sandawe of Tanzania with around 60,000 people. Khoisan languages are best known for their use of click consonants as phonemes. These are typically written with characters such as the exclamation mark. For anyone willing to learn these languages, they have to first understand that there are five types of cliques. Most Khoisan languages use four clique in sounds. And others use a fifth one, known as the kiss clique. The Giriku and Yei, which are Bantu languages of Botswana and Namibia, use the four clique Khoisan system, but Zulu and Kosa use only three cliques. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed learning about the fascinating world of these ancient click languages, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you want to learn more about African history, then make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell icon.